welcome to another war game review from the playersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look at a new game from Multiman Publishing, MMP. And it's called Rostov 41 Race to the Dawn. And this is part of their Standard Combat series, or SCS. This particular title was designed by Ray Weiss, but the whole series was birthed by Dean Essig a number of years ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is game number 21 in the system. Yes. There's, so, it's there's been, been around for a while. a lot of these, and it's a very popular system amongst people who play it. And I see why. Yes, yes. So... I, I think I see why, because it really, the rules are, to me, very clear. Yes. They make sense, and I'm not sure... that We talked about this. The complexity comes in the understanding of how to use the rules. Yes. Meaning... What do I do? How do I get around this? How do I do that? Yeah, if you watch the mm -hmm. unboxing, the reality of this game is is there's about 10 pages of rules. Very simple. Which for a Hex Encounter War game is both impressive and also very enticing. Very impressive. Uh, most impressive. Yeah, it is. Most impressive. That's why I said it. <laughs> but uh, I, I, it's good because, like you said, the rules are simple, but yeah. they are very clear yep. and very concise. Like, when we read the minutia of some of those rules, and some other games we've played, I've been like, what the hell did that just say? Yeah. This, we read it, and I was like, makes sense. Yeah. That clicked, understood it, let's move on. There was almost nothing <clears throat> that wasn't no. crystal clear in the rules that I had to be like, eh, what does it mean by that? And they did throw in some interesting things, like the CRT and the... The odds calculation. There were some differences in some of the... Yes. You round everything up. That's fairly... Well, you it, it's it's mathematical rounding. Right, right. If it's, That's what I meant. If it's 0. 0.5 or more, you round up. If it's 0. 0.49 or less, you, you round, round down. down. And basically... It, but it explains that in yeah, which multiple times. It reiterates itself. Yep. It explains mm -hmm. that. And then later on in the attacks, it's like, remember, this is what yep. you do. And it's not just defenders always favored. Yeah. It explains that because there are times where you want to be on the offensive and it will reward you for doing that. Mm -hmm. It also will reward you for being doing well on the defensive and, and yep. count, doing some good calculations and bits and pieces. So anytime there's things which might be a little bit new or a little bit different from standard war games, it, the rules are very clear and it explained itself mm -hmm. very well. Yeah. Again, 10 pages of rules. Really, really easy to consume and yeah. to get onto the table. Yes. Which I think a lot of times in a lot of these style war games is not the norm. You're going to have 20, 25 pages of rules and it takes a lot yeah. longer to digest, understand, and get it to the table. This, I almost feel like novice war gamers, and I think we're novice war gamers sometimes, <laughs> but really novice war gamers, I think they could get through this yes. and play this game and understand it. And to me, that's impressive, especially in a system that does have some bigger titles, yes, and some bigger battles, yes, and that's and some, you know, that's something else that I'm excited to explore as mm -hmm. well. Is I actually have I've got Mighty Endeavor, which is part of this series. Yep. You have Day of Days, huge game, which is a five, five map. Maps. Uh, yeah, it's but a, you can do one map scenarios, yeah. two map scenarios. But having a game system that is quite literally that simple. And have it scale presumably well, it's impressive, based yeah. on how this game is. Yeah, that's it shows how robust it is, mm -hmm. which is nice. The play uh, has a good pace to it. Yep, um, you can once, especially once you know the rules. These, well, this particular tile, it was like one and a bit sheet of counters at most. I think it was two counter sheets. And most of them were administrative yes, counters. Yes, 50-50 admin counters. You yeah. don't have a ton of counters on the board. Stacking limit is basically two or three. It's three, yeah. It's three it's in this three. one. Yeah. So you, it's, it's not like this colossal yeah. beast of a game. So you're like, oh, I'm going to do all my moves, then I've got attack, 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 attack. So you yeah. just kind of roll through it. Yep. Um, the, and within that, they've got some really nice, uh, I don't know, flavor and mm -hmm. and they've built in some really good war game aspects into it yeah so the sequence of play has built into it 
various different stages at which you can do barrages, mm -hmm. but but the Germans can utilize both barrage phases. The Soviets right. can only utilize one, and it, and it reflects their different doctrines and flexibility with air power that they had uh, and field artillery. Well, it, it also allowed the Germans specifically to move some guns up. Yes. B because barrage comes typically before everything else. So it's well, like you. So barrage comes after movement. Well, uh, yours you can do attack and then move, and, and, then, and that's why. Yeah. That's what I. The yes. distinction I was trying to get. It's like you can use your guns at different points. Yes. It to me also the barrage element is very interesting because it's a lot of times artillery or or it, it, it's a it's a column shift, or a lot of times it's just. It's different. This, it, it threw some different elements into it. It created a disorganized. Yeah, you'd throw disorganized, which is halving units, yeah, factors, that, and things that like that. That was very valuable, man. Very. So it caused me to use my artillery in a very different way than maybe in other games. Yes. Where I was looking more for a column shift. This, I'm like, well, you got a pretty good stack there. I'm going to have it by throwing some barrages into it or an airstrike. And really make you less effective on the defensive. Do you remember? Do you know what that reminded me of? It reminded me, uh, in a sense, of Silver Bayonet. I don't know if you remember that. I do. I that do. Was it's one of my favorite games, uh, and part of it is because there is also a number of different phases you can use your artillery bombardments. Yep. Both offensively and defensively. Yes. So you get choices on when you're going to do that, and in which phases, and it's, mm -hmm. and you, and like you said, you're using it. To, to give an effect and to soften up a target. So yep. when you do an attack, you go in and do an attack at a different phase. Rather than, like you said, a lot of games, it's like, oh, I've got an artillery piece column stack. shift. We get a column shift. Which, don't get me wrong, That's column fine. shifts are great, but I liked that implementation in yeah, this, it's, that disorganization. You feel a little bit, you get a bit of that granularity of my different units mean something. Mm -hmm. And so, oh, I get to, I'm moving my artillery pieces is important, and you, I get to use them as artillery. Yeah. You have to have units adjacent to enemies to act as sponsors for them. That was an interesting element, too. But it's yep. not complicated. No, it's not. You just, but it, it's, it's a reality that you've got to do. It's tactical. Yes. You've got to get your units in position to act as those spotters to then use those barrages. Yeah. So lots of that, that, it was very good. I thought it was very yes. well laid out, very well implemented, and created an interesting situation where my units mattered. Yeah, and I think another... Um, Really, well, I don't want to say really unique, but another thing that makes this stand out from other ones is the way that they have, you have your movement phase, you have your attack phase, and then there's this exploitation phase, yeah. where certain yeah. units, if they've got a big yellow band, they... And most of the German units have that, yeah, most of them. In, in this one, it's basically mech units, armor yeah. units, and motorized infantry. Yeah. They... Well, bi bicycle... Infantry as well, yeah. had it, which was interesting. This, yeah, Are they, those motorized? They, well, they, it was motorcycle battalions. Okay, I, I kept calling them bicycles, but they're motorcycles. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> those guys basically get a whole other movement phase. Yeah. And so, you know, you if, you, if you're using roads and tracks, you've got like yep. eight or ten movement. You go whoosh, halfway across the map. Then you do a combat. And then you can do it again. Yeah. And, and you really get the feel of that Blitzkrieg style. Right. Whereas a lot of the Russian units were leg infantry, and so they just kind of sat there. They Flying. can't even utilize that phase. Yeah. Uh, and so. And I had units that couldn't utilize that phase yeah. as well, but they came on more as reinforcements later. But again, it's that tactics of how far do I overstretch my units by right. double moving them, basically, where I'm leaving my artillery behind because they yep. don't, they, they're very slow. Yep, they are very slow. You get into all that good stuff, mm -hmm. and. I'll come back to it. In 10 pages of rules. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Uh, it's, yep. it's very impressive. Yep. Other than that, you know, movement with movement factors across terrain, mm -hmm. things we're very, very used to. Combats is, uh, combat is odds-based. Yep. I have this many, you have that many, we have a ratio, we roll on the CRT. Mm -hmm. the CRT is very punishing, I would I would say. I, I agree. Uh, if you, Lots of times at a one-to-one, -one, you don't want to attack at all. Yes. Attacking Period. with one-to-one -one is not good. Attacking with two-to-one is... Okay, at best, it's better. Still risky. You want to get into your three to one, four to one odds. Yeah, and in a lot of games, very very difficult to do that. Yeah, in this one, you have things like artillery. Mm -hmm. In those barrages, they add disorganized markers that halves people in a disorganized. Which makes it stack. much more. Yeah. So all of a sudden, you know, you can have 
six, I've got six points, you've got three, I'm at two to one, eh, that's okay. If I D, get a DG on you, now we're talking. Yeah. Now we're starting to creep up Four in those to five to one. Yeah. Uh, and, and that does create a lot of situations where I found myself studying... And isn't that the old quintessential? I'm looking for one more combat factor. I, I'm trying <laughs> yes. to understand better, though, how that CRT was established and then how I need to manipulate that with my odds to make it more effective. Yes. The, the other thing that was very interesting is you can split those results up, you know, like a D, a defender loses a step and then retreats, what was it, two or three spaces. You could actually say, oh, you know what? I'm going to lose an extra step because I want to hold this position. Yes, you can forego retreats by taking more step losses. And I've had I've seen that in other games, but I felt like that was very thematic here. Yeah, it works well. Because the Russians, man, with some of those low-value units, you're going to say, okay, I'm going to take a, a hit because I want to hold this. Yeah. I don't I want the Germans to get behind me, utilize their exploitation move, and then hammer me I, so it works is that rule works very well on east front games i agree right if you're defending Rostov, hold that line you're just chucking guys in from yep. from a, from across the dawn and they're they're just getting killed kill killed you're getting all these retreat results you ju you're just dying 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 then you're just getting more guys in and your reinforcement yep. phase instead of having to move out and lose just from retreats which a lot of games do where you're just like oh yeah. it's it's a moving game this one you have the option and it is an option yeah. to just stand and fight and die to hold objectives yep. and, it, and i and i enjoy the flexibility of being able to do that well it gives you once again that tactical option to figure yeah. out what am i trying to do and how should i be doing it the, the other really interesting part and maybe this was just an exclusive rule to the scenario that initiative concept I, I don't know that that is that in the standard. Yeah, so so the okay. initiative is standard. He says yes, I think. Well, so I don't know if that's in the mm. in the all series game. Sorry, we. Well, so the I, I the initiative was in the in this game specific rules, and this one was you roll off. Yeah, whoever's got the highest wins, but, and but the yeah the difference between the two is how many airstrikes. That player the has play the winning gets. player has. It, that was really interesting because it, you know, initiative. Okay, do I really want to go first? Maybe not sometimes. But in this one, I really wanted to roll high. I got to go first, but then I also had the opportunity to get a couple of those airstrikes. Yes, if they're available to you. If they're available, in, in some it, it turns halfway through this game. Right, the Russians start being able to get them, and the Germans don't. Can't. Yeah, which is again, it's a it's a really simple way of of doing. Yep. The Luftwaffe having been you know starting yeah. to get depleted and being reassigned. But it to me it created a different feeling and a different opportunity with that initiative. Yeah, it's more than just a roll. I'm going first. Yeah, it's more than I'm just going first. It's now, ooh, I really want to win that because I want those extra airstrikes. Yeah, and I want to roll really well doing yeah. it. Yeah, because airstrikes were a little more flexible. I didn't have to have a spotter unit, but I had to use them within three, was it three spaces of a friendly unit. I wanted to hit your tanks back there, but you <laughs> kept them far enough aback. I really enjoyed that. I thought that was neat. Yeah. So well done there, Ray, if that's Something you threw in, I thought that was a nice way to handle that. Yeah, it was. It was. It was and, and the other thing with that is during clear weather, the Germans got a plus one. Yes. So it aided you really in the first part of the game, give them an extra asset so that they can get further ahead. Later on, it's frozen and it's not clear very often, so it's no, harder yeah, to use that. The mud. Yeah, the mud <laughs> and the guck and the. So, yeah, very well done. I like that initiative part. Yes. So, what I'll do is I'll show you the board, and we'll go through just a, a, some, some of the aspects of this game, and then we'll wrap up with some final thoughts. So, here's a look at at least a significant portion of the map. Uh, you can see, kind of, you can see we've got these line of units going down the board. Uh, and that's, you know, often how these war games are, where there's a lot of empty space, because we haven't fought there yet. The Germans are advancing this way, going east, trying to take Rostov. Uh, and then the Russians are trying to hold the line, hold the line, hold the line. And then halfway through, again, they start pushing back as well. Trying to recapture ground. Um, the units themselves are uh, quite standard, at least for, uh, uh, for a war game. So we'll get a couple here to show you. 
They have three factors on them, and it is a move factor, a defense factor, and then, uh, he says, come on. And then they also have, Kiemen. They also have a, uh, so it's move, movement factor on the right, in the center is a defense factor, and on the left, we got ourselves an attack factor. They got a little NATO symbol dictating what they are, so we've got infantry, we've got anti-tank units, and then they've got uh, some uh, demarcation of which um, which uh, divisions and, and stuff that they're from as well. You'll notice that a lot of these units have these yellow bands behind them. That's what we were talking about. Uh, these units are usually mech units, armor units, or motorized units, so they can utilize exploitation movement. They can move much faster than these regular leg units. These are just this is just guys walking, right? This is a Russian infantry battalion just walking on the ground. Whereas these guys are being pulled by trucks, or we have cavalry units, we've got panzers, we've got motor infantry and half tracks. So they can, basically, they can move during the movement phase, and then after they do combats, there's like an extra movement phase that they can use. So it's that whole blitzkrieg mentality, being able to move much further than, than leg units could. Um, and that, that's basically how this game works. We'll have just a real quick look at the sequence of play here. It's kind of small and it's printed on the front of the rulebook. So you have a reinforcement phase, you put reinforcements out. And then you have this German barrage phase where they can optionally use any artillery or airstrikes that they have. Then you do regular movement phase, move all your units on the board. Then there's a regular barrage movement barrage phase, which German units can fire their artillery or airstrikes in this phase, but if you're a Soviet player, you can't do it before movement, you can only do it after movement. That's what we're talking about, especially as the Germans having the options of when to use your artillery, it, it, it indicates the doctrinal use of things. Softening things up, then moving in and smashing them with panzers, rather than it's, I move up to the line, I hammer everything, and then we do attacks. After we do all the barraging and movement, then we have a combat phase, where we do all of our attacks. Then we have exploitation phase, and this is that kind of blitzkrieg phase, where if you're not adjacent to an enemy, you can move your whole movement again. After that, you do some supply and cleanup. But what's really cool about this system is that as part of movement, you can do overrun combat, which is you can basically do fighting on the go, uh, so you, you can get into, you can do moving, fighting, fighting in a combat phase, and then moving and fighting and exploitation. You have a lot of tactical options about how and when you attack the enemy. It's really, really, really neat. So let's say we've got this little, well, here, we'll put the little anti-tank unit here, right? Let's say I've got this big stack of units here. So I've got six movement and eight movement. Basically... In the movement phase, you can try to overrun these guys. You spend your movement points, it costs two to go into an enemy zone of control, which is one of the six hexes around a unit. And then you spend two more movement factors to do an attack. So he's used four of his six, he's used four of his eight. But you just roll an attack and you roll it immediately. So to do an attack, you basically just compare odds, roll 2d6, and then look at the table. So let's have a quick look. At our odds here, we've got attack factor of 4 and 3, so we've got 7, 7 on a 2. So 7 on a 2 would normally, we, you know, we'd, we'd look at, oh, that's like 3 to 1, right? But it's, in every other game, you'd round down to 3 to 1. In this game, that's, it's 3 and a half to 1. And with half fractions, if it's exactly half, you round up. So instead of it being 3 to, uh... Instead of it being, what did I say, 2 to 1? Instead of it being 2 to 1, 7 to 2. So instead of it being 3 to 1, 3 and a half to 1, you get 4 to 1. Yes, that's what I was saying. So the way the odds work in this one is a little bit different. But you, you move, you fight your combat, so you roll your little 2d6. Oh, I've knocked everything over. So I rolled an 8, and if you look on, for example, the 4 to 1 table, you'd look down at 8. Defender loses one step and then retreats two. Okay, so Defender loses one step. They're only a one-step unit, so they're dead. You just kill them off the board. 
I can fill this space as advance after combat. Uh, and then what's nice is I can then finish my movement and that's really, really awesome. Boop, 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 boop. So you can keep moving on the, on the roads or you can move off roads, that kind of thing. And, and all of that is done in this movement phase with overrun combat or the exploitation phase. You can do all of that. Or you can just do regular moves and then you get into regular combats. After that, you've got this exploitation phase where you do it again. It's just, it's very, very dynamic. And that's the word that I would use for this game, which is amazing for a game that was, the series was first made in 1998. Uh, so, it's just funny that I'm only now discovering this in his 2021 title. I mean, the series has been around for 22 years, and it, uh, to me, this implementation still rem retains a lot of its dynamism. I just, I, I just think it's very, very cool and very, very fun to do. Uh, the other aspect when we talked about barrages that's really important is you've got these artillery units. We've got artillery here and here. We've got rocket artillery here. They have this little range number on them. And so within range, if they've got a unit adjacent to another unit to spot for them, they can they can do a barrage. And you do that before combats uh, are done. And what's neat in this one, it's a little bit it's a little bit administrative in a way. Every single artillery unit has a corresponding counter. So we got this uh, LH uh, SS unit. He has a corresponding barrage counter. So he's got range four. So we go one, two, three, four. Let's barrage this guy. Boop, you put your barrage marker on there. It's got a little three on it. You just roll a die. You gotta roll three or less. I rolled a two. Great. And what happens is you put a DG for a disorganized marker on him. So we'll get rid of that. That's kind of used. We'll get that off. And we put a little DG on there. And the DG basically halves all these values and means they can't do exploitation and things like that. Boom. So now he's a half value. He's got a one and a half defense strength. Now I'm going to attack him. I'm going to be rolling much, much better odds. And I, I just... That kind of stuff is fun. Positioning your artillery within range, making sure you've got spotters, trying to execute these attacks is cool. What's really nice is if I had rolled a one, because my target number was a three, if you roll two less than this number... So even if, you, if, if you've got a 4 and you roll a 2, if you roll under that number by 2 or more, not only do you add the, the disorganized marker, but you also flip a counter. You, they take a step loss, if possible. And like in other games, artillery cannot kill a unit. It can't reduce it beyond its last step. If you've got a stack of units like this, which are much harder to attack because they're in a city, you can take a step loss on any one of the units that you choose. Or you could kill a unit and, and keep these guys at full strength. It's up to you as, as, the, uh, as the defender who does what, basically. At least for artillery. I believe for airstrikes, um, the attacker chooses who takes the step loss, which is really nice. Uh, the, the, the airstrikes are limited. You'll have basically one to three in this scenario if you're allowed to use them. And if you win enough on initiative, they're just uh, they're just barrage markers. But instead of having to have a unit next to them, this guy is one, two, three spaces away. Oh, that's not a guy. Let's say you got a guy in the rear. He's three spaces away. You can fly the Luftwaffe over and attack a guy you normally couldn't. And these guys are four up attacks, and they do have a they got a Russian side on the back as well, which are not as good as you might well imagine because the Red Air Force was maybe not as highly well trained. As the, as the Luftwaffe at this point early in the war. Later in the war, eh, different story. They were very, very good. Uh, but that's that's what this game is. It's moving. A lot of these um, cities have victory points on them. You're trying to accrue victory points as the Germans. 14 or more, you win. 14 or fewer, and you're going to lose. And there's degrees of losing, but it's not a complicated game. You're moving, doing odds-based combats. The rules, again, are very simple. But how and when you choose to do your exploitation movement, so you might move, do a combat, and then you can move again. Uh, and being able to set that up, because if you're adjacent to an enemy in that you're in their zone of control, you can't do exploitation movement, you can't do overrun combat. So you don't want to get locked into these mortal battles if you're trying to rush. 
you want to stay a little bit further back, maybe not advance after combat, so that you can charge in and smash and move through units. And that's something that's really, really neat. Is Rules are easy, but the tactics are very, very rich. So that's about how the game works, at least uh, to, to most, most of the extent of it. What we'll do is we'll wrap up with some final thoughts. So that was a look at the game. Uh, I, I don't know. I really enjoy this game. Honestly. Well, I... And it's embarrassing. This is the first standard combat series game... Yes. ...we've actually grokked and played. Yes. We own some, we as own, we, we mentioned. We own a couple others, but... But this, this is, is the first one. that we've grokked and we've played, and I, I feel bad about that. I'm embarrassed for you. I'm embarrassed for us, but <laughs> I'm embarrassed for us that we haven't, because there's yeah. 21 other games... There's games on a lot of other battles that we really enjoy playing. We yes. love Market Garden stuff. Yes. We love West Front stuff, typically. East Front is probably on the lower end of our preferred uh, yeah. theaters of combat, but it, it always offers an interesting tactical puzzle. Yeah. It always offers the pendulum, pendulum of... Hey, Germans are good at first, and then they weaken at the end, and the you Russians... Yeah, you just have to know that's what you're getting yourself into. Yeah. And even though this isn't all of the East Front... It's still, it's still very much got that right. style. The Germans are trying to blitzkrieg across, and the Russians will be quite passive yep. in the first half. Hold your objectives. Hang on, get some reinforcements yep. in, and then it's going to turn, they're going to get more, and then it's on them to take back the other half of the board, because in the yeah. full campaign, uh, the Germans have to have 14 or more victory points at the end, yeah. and the various the cities campaign. are worth more. Um, so you, they're basically trying to hang on to like the western half of the board, basically. Yeah. And so it's very much got that narrative to it, but as long as you know that going into it and you're totally yeah. fine with that, then that's fine. And, and, and it was an interest To me, there was a lot of interesting interplay, a lot of interesting... How do yeah. I attack you here? Do I do this? Do I do that? Where do I move? Where do I move when I retreat? That also was a very interesting yes. concept. Or even, hey, I just kicked your butt, forced you to retreat. I don't want to move into that space because I want to retain the opportunity to do my overrun and, overrun and exploitation, and exploitation later. Lots of those interesting tactical elements that I thought in a lot of East Front games aren't always present. Yeah. Well, that's, or they're present, but they're in a different form. Yeah, that's one of the things that I think we talked about is that this game is easy to learn the rules. Yeah. But to master the tactics and it's a different story. It is there, there's some there's some meat on the bones of this game yeah. as you play it out. Like there are really important decisions to be made, yeah. how you organize attacks. You might try to starve places out, get them out of supply before you wipe them off the board. Organizing that kind of stuff through the various phases, lining up your um, barrages, when yeah. to use airstrikes, because airstrikes can also be used out of turn, and they can be used to interrupt. So I might be moving. You're moving up, boom. Oh, I'm, I'm moving my you. tank column, and you're like, haha, just I'm kidding. Hit you. Here's my Stuka dive bombers, and we're going to bomb you on the road before yeah. I can get into the combats. There's some really, really nice things to think about and to mm -hmm. consider as you play this, and it 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 uh, its robustness makes me want to play more in this series as well. Well, and and also this kind of a game, you know, we we played it once today. I already realized I made some critical errors yeah. in the first round. That in our next play, I would not, I would not do that. Typically with how I divided my forces and attacked different points, because I didn't think as far ahead with my reinforcements. When I got my reinforcements in round three and four, I'm like, oh, I didn't need to worry about that so Yeah, because these guys were going to mop it up. Yeah, they were going to clean that up. I needed to push towards the center. I needed to do this. And, and that's what those multiple plays of this game yeah. are going to do. I, I also always say about war games... There are going to be times when you play a game three or four times, you're going to keep doing the same things because they work, right? I'm going to attack here because that's what I've got to do. And that's going to take six turns to take over, and i got to do that yeah. now. So repeated plays of this game and the system yeah. are going to teach you, you're going to learn lessons through mistakes that you won't make in the future. Yeah, and I just as a general observation, I think especially of East Front games is... Mm -hmm. The, the Germans have to have a plan, and they have to execute it very, very well mm -hmm. to, 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 to win. To do well, but and I think I, the more that I play games that are like that, 
the first play always sucks because you always mess it up. Yeah. The second play, you're like, okay, I know what I I know much better about how to do what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. And so that those plays become much richer, and that, that to me reflects what actually happened or didn't happen. Frankly. Yeah, absolutely. They they, they were they sh- there were things that in theory they should have done to be able to win that that campaign, and they didn't get done properly or they weren't they didn't organize their forces well enough and yeah. so it, inevitably it overall it was a big failure but the the concept of playing something challenging and failing at it, it to me the more i play these the more i'm like i i enjoy that of it, being able to learn about oh it, i'll do this next time in that, better in that kind of why we play these games i think to so, see yeah. why did it play out this way what happened you, you know it's funny we we had some real qu- I had some quagmires in the middle of the map there, and I just couldn't get the rolls to get you out. Yes, I needed to get you out because I didn't want you messing around with my supply, or cutting the lines so that I couldn't use the rail lines or the roads. And it's just that's the funny thing about these war games. Yeah, and uh, you know, and as much as you've got your best laid plans. You Something s- always is going to go awry. You some dice, and you will get some heroic stand yep. with my guy, this little rifle battalion yeah. that held up almost an entire panzer uh, because division. Of a, because of a damn river <laughs> and a city <laughs> hex. so yeah. long that probably saved uh, half, thousands of lives. the rest of the map yeah. as well. And yep. that, you know, those little stories are cool. Yep. I always like that in war games as well. But yep. this game, I would... Amazingly, uh, as an East Front game, I'd recommend this because oh, it's I not would. massively yeah. complicated. But frankly, even having not played any other ones, I'd probably recommend this series to anyone. I don't think there's a question. Uh, I think both seasoned war gamers and newer war gamers are going to enjoy this. People ask me all the time, "Hey, I've played a coin game or two, but mm-hmm. I want to get into Hex Encounter. What should be my first Hex Encounter? SCS. This ain't a bad place to Rockstar start. Rockstar 41 would be a good one to start. Anytime you can get a one-mapper in this series, yep. and there's a few, the rules are very easy to learn and yep. digestible, but you will get you get the tactics and the meat out of a Hex Encounter that you should do. Yeah. And so that, th- this series is a great place to start if you're new to Wargaming. So maybe that's an idea for what we need to do. We need to play a couple more in this system. I have Day of Days. You yeah. have Mighty Endeavor. We've got Big End. <laughs> yeah, Big End, maybe a little more, you know, West Front Big End, and then West Front maybe a little more moderate. Oh, got, Liberation got, of Paris, right? They got North right? Africa stuff as well. I want to get into that too. We need to, we need to do some work, man. <laughs> But what I'm saying is maybe we need to look at that system and help people understand better, here's what you're jumping into. Yeah. Go into this. OCS, I'm sure, is way more... That's That's got more meat on the boat. It, it's in the deep end. It's a little more hard. Maybe we need to rec- start recommending this and do that video series where we talk about, here's where you jump in point. Maybe. Jump in here. So... Good game. Enjoyed it. Loved it. This was a 2020 release. Yes. Glad we played it. Would love to play it again. And I would, like you said, recommend it to others. I really would. Yeah, and I'd recommend it, frankly, to any level of war game. Yes. If you're new, good place to start. If you're a veteran. If you've played a number like we have. Yep. Jump in. It's good. It's still good. If you've played, you know, decades and decades worth, there's still still something here. Yeah. To have fun with. I One of the things I love about war games is we're sitting here and we're jockeying, sorry, we're <laughs> jockeying around at the very beginning of the game. We're always looking for those areas of weakness. You know, I see a unit or two and I'm like, well, I hope he doesn't move those units because I can really, or, ooh, he did move those units and man, that opened up an area. And I love that about these war games. And there's a lot of that to learn yeah. in, this, in this system, in this East Front setup. I enjoy that. I, I had that. I, I got excited again. It's been a while since we played a good Hex Encounter War game because we haven't played that much in 2020. Yeah. I'm glad we got this out to the table. I'm going to go home and I'm going to clip Day of Days. <laughs> and we're going to yeah. gonna do those one or two scenario or one or two map scenarios at first because I really liked this system. Yes, it was very, so, very good. I got off. I got excited there. Sorry, no, my no. heart started beating a little faster. Yes. I'm gonna go home and start clipping that. Well, that I've, path, I've like. got mighty endeavor. I might play that solo even because it's yeah. apparently quite one sided as well. Well, it's, I'm not it's sure. Liberation. And I have I have the yeah. old version. There's a new version that has east front and west front, and it's both oh. sides converging on. I don't Ooh, have that fun. one, but yeah, that'd be fun. That 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 sounds apparently yeah. it's really good. So 
Rasta41 from MMP. Uh, big thumbs up from me. Uh, from me too. Re I mean, I just can't. I can't speak highly enough of how easy it was to learn these rules, and, and yeah. considering how few there are. Well, and it, this, if I remember correctly, when we bought it at sale, didn't we buy this at no, the sale? No, this was it, we got it during the sale, but this was not this on was, sale. This was, was a new it, release. Forty dollars. Oh, forty-five maybe. 40, 50? I mean, still, I, I know it's only one map, yeah. two counter sheets, but forty to forty-five bucks you can get into this system. You can get into war games. Yes. And I think the production value is good. White core counters, easy to clip. They look great. The map is, I think, fairly solid. It is the style where we talked about the bands of numbers and then you have to count. Yeah. I MMP. prefer to see them, but that's the way MMP does yeah. it. It's All okay. It works. Um, but yeah, good value. Get into the system, learn it, and then you can move on. What were the other ones? Bastone was in there. The new Iron Curtain, I think, is in this series. Yes. I'd like to get all those and really play them because they're all different theaters. So I'm excited. I'm excited about Wargaming again. It's been a while. We haven't <laughs> played a lot of these good style games, so I'm ready to get into it again. Yes, so appreciate you guys tuning in. Check this game out. Oh, frankly, any from the standard combat series yeah. whose theme would uh, appeal to you because uh, yep. based on this and the series rules, you're going to have a good time with any of them. Yes. So thanks for tuning in. I've been Alexander from ThePlayersAid.com. And I'm Grant.